Hey guys, this is Rich from Pacific, and I'm here to give you another episode of my Sampire 101 video tutorial series on how to make a Sampire from scratch in Ultima Online, how to craft some of the gear, how to train the skills, and get it up and rolling and working for you. So this episode is um, a little bit different. It's not really specific for the Sampire, but I figured that it would be valuable. A lot of people have asked for information on this. So I'm going to cover how to get 100% elemental weapons, which are pretty much the new thing that most most melee or dexter characters are using. There's a lot of advantages to using 100% elemental weapons, especially with a Sampire build. Um, it allows you to really do the most damage and you know you can avoid casting consecrate as much as possible uh, it really saves on mana there and it also works really well with a swordsmanship uh, mastery called onslaught so in this video I'm going to show you how to make them how to get the materials to make them and all that good stuff so if you guys like this and want more of this kind of thing like and subscribe much appreciated Alright, so in this video I'm going to be talking about 100% elemental damage weapons in Ultima Online um, and why you might want to use them and how you're going to craft them from scratch. So if you haven't noticed, you know, the, the weapons we've made so far, they have 100% physical damage and that's because they were just made out of iron and by default most of the items you'll find in the game will have physical damage but what's interesting is that you can get elemental weapons such as this axe that has a hundred percent fire damage or this set of comma that has a hundred percent uh, energy damage or this die show that has a hundred percent cold um, so this is super useful with your Sampire or pretty much any melee uh, weapon user because if you can match the damage type that your weapon has with the weakest uh, resistance of the enemy you're fighting you're gonna do more damage over time you're going to have to use Consecrate less or not at all um, and so these are just uh, great boons plus especially with the swordsmanship uh, mastery there's a mastery called Onslaught, which will take the elemental type of weapon you're using and lower your enemy's resistance to that elemental type. Now, that the mastery doesn't actually require it to be 100%. It just requires, it uses the, the, like, the highest elemental type. So if it was 70, 30, it would use the 70 and lower your target's uh, resistance in the 70% uh, uh, elemental damage type. But we're going to focus on how to get 100% out of crafted weapons. You can see here's a poison. Um, this is not just for axes. I'm, I'm going to be making axes for our Sampire, but um, you can make bows and comma and pretty much any craftable weapon that has a runic tool associated with it. So to do that, to make these weapons, we're going to be using Runic Reforging. So you can see it says Reforged Miner. Um, and I'm going to show you that process. Uh, so for for metal weapons, you're going to want to basically use the Shadow Runic Hammer. Is You'll get the best results out of this. Now it is possible to also use um, Dull Copper Runic Hammers. They won't ever give you 100% on the roll, but what they may give you is like 80-20 or 70-30. And I'll show you later in this video where you can take those types of weapons and then enhance them. Um, and it is risky because enhancing fails a lot, and when it fails, it, it destroys the item. Um, but, you know, we're going to be making a lot of them, and I'll show you how you can get 100% out of dull copper runic hammers. Um, but the f main focus is going to be what I would recommend is using shadow runic hammers. Okay, so we're going to start off with 
you're first you're gonna need you're gonna need a lot of shadow runic hammers because um, unlike other crafting processes um, reforging isn't you can't exactly pick what you get you can kind of focus the properties that you want but it is still random so we're not going to be able to say you know i'm absolutely going to craft 100 percent fire if you want to make a fire axe it may take a lot of tries before you actually get the fire axe you may get other elemental types so what I recommend is getting as many charges of shadow runic hammer as you can uh, before you start this process um, so to get the shadow runic hammers the the you can you can try to buy them they are kind of expensive they'll, they'll run at least 350k or more um, or more on your on my shard I think they're between 300 and 500k a piece and that's for I think 30 charges um, so that's that's pretty spendy and you're gonna go through probably a couple hundred charges at least before you get a good uh, weapon that you're gonna want so what I like to do is um, just just make them myself or, or get them myself using the BOD system so uh, before you start this process, what I recommend doing is going through and, you know, with a mage or something, go through and mark all of the um, ironworks or blacksmith locations that you can find. So I, I like to use Vesper. It's my hometown. I use the Fell Vesper sites. I find that um, the bribery costs are a lot less with them. Maybe it's just because I'm aligned with that town. I don't know. But you're going to want to basically bribe bods up to a certain level, um, small bods. And so basically any small bod that is of armor type, not weapons, but armor only, can be turned into enough points to create a um, shadow runic hammer. Um, and it just what you're gonna do is use the bribery system uh, which I'll show you here in a moment but just to give you an idea you can go to one of the you know basically any blacksmith and you can say um, claim rewards and you can see if we scroll down through that a shadow runic hammer is 550 points that's what we need to get one um, now you may be familiar with this process when we used it to get powder of fortification for 450 so we need a little bit more dull copper 500 but 550 is the number that we're looking for um, now if you end up with small bods that are more than 550 and that are at least 650 what I recommend doing is getting the copper runic hammers instead um, and then saving them for another reforging project because copper is a valuable hammer for other reforging um, processes but and you know just save that bod for something else so 550 is what we want so anything between 550 and you know 625 um, we're gonna turn into a shadow runic hammer now to give you an idea the bods that can do that I could take a exceptional 10 piece chainmail like a t t exceptional 10 piece uh, of any armor type and bribe it up to v right which is the second highest uh, um, ingot type and you can see that okay well that's 710 points so I'm not even going to use that exceptional however if I take um, 20 exceptional copper that gives me 550 points so if you have an exceptional 20 piece you can bribe it up to copper and that's just enough points to get you a shadow runic um, so I, I like to use like items that are not as expensive on ingots so heater shields I think only take 10 ingots things like helmets and kite shields they you know you don't want to use plate mail for example which can take 20 25 ingots um, so V right normal 20 piece will give me 550 so even this normal tier kite shield you can bribe it up to v-right and you can get 550 uh, valorite normal 10 piece item 560 valorite normal 20 
it's 600 so I'm still going to you know it's 20 helmets it's a lot of Valorite I may or may not turn this one in but you know that's under 650 so I'm going to definitely turn this into a shadow runic hammer um, now you can also see that gold 50 so if it's 15 exceptional you can bribe it up to gold now I believe it would have been uh, 10 exceptional you can bribe up to gold and that's the minimum threshold so this is 625 I'm still you know so you know if you you got to collect a lot of the bods it, it help it helps to have at least um, you know if you don't know how to do bods this won't really be a fully inclusive video about them but my suggestion is is to take at least point one skill in every crafting uh, skill there is on any of your alternate tunes especially your crafter and as long as you have at least point one you can get bots now they might not be the best but as you can see we don't really need the best we just need you know uh, either exceptional or normal pieces and then we need a little bit of gold to do some bribing uh, now the bribing process is a little bit like this you'll go to these and you'll say bribe and he's saying, oh, no, my business is being watched. I can't do it right now. So let's let's find a different um, a different bribe. We'll go to uh, Scarbray Smith. See if I can not fizz. So I go to this guy and I say, hey, bribe. And then you give him, you know, so this is 15 exceptional shadow which you can see is 475. I think I had set these aside to do powder fortification. But say, all right, 15 exceptional, so I'm gonna to wanna to bribe that up to at least gold. So I say bribe, and then he says, and he'll tell you how much it'll cost. So it's saying it'll cost 600 gold, and then you drag the bot onto him, and he'll give it right back, and he'll say, oh, it's co now it's copper. Now, sometimes when you bribe, it'll increase the number, or it'll turn a normal into exceptional. But most of the time, what it'll do is it'll raise the ingot type by one. So now you can see this 15 exceptional copper is now worth 525. Well, I need to do it one more time because that's not 550, so I can bribe again. And now I'm saying it's going to cost 1500. So I turn it in, and now it's bronze. So I guess that is. So 15 exceptional uh, items you need to bribe up to at least bronze to get to 550 points. Now if I went to gold, it would have been um, 625. So there you go. And eventually he'll tell you that he, you can't bribe anymore, and it does get more expensive every time. So, um, but you can see right there, I spent, you know, maybe 2,100, 2,300 gold, and now I have a bod that was just a normal old bod that now I could cr uh, fill and get 550 points to get my shadow hammers. So, like I said, it really helps to have a book of runes ahead of time that have multiple smith locations so that you can while you're bribing you can just go through and and you know hit them all in a row and that way you can bribe up lots of bods and get yourself a bulk order book and just start collecting the bods and remember that the weapon type the weapon ones don't work for this they need to be an armor type and you can use the filter in your bulk order book to say you know just show me small exceptional bods of blacksmithing and then you can go through and, and pick the ones that are the cheapest to make. You know, if you're like me and then you end up with just a bunch of plate mail pieces, um, you can do those. They'll just take more ingots. So I'm going to show you the best way to get colored ingots. Now you can mine, but um, the technique that I use, it does take a little bit of um, setup and will require a different character. but if you're wondering the best way to get V-Rite and Valorite and all the top end ingots, I'll show you now. All right, so the best way that I know to get the high level ingots and crafting materials is to actually use 
um, the high seas expansion and so what you want to do is you want to find these kind of rich merchant ships that sail around in certain seas so I I usually hunt um, you know in this vicinity just uh, uh, east of uh, Jollum in this whole sea area I usually can find pirates and these merchant ships and what you do is you don't even really have to fight them you just you just shoot them with your cannon until they get scuttled and um, you know you look for the ones that have these kind of rare wood uh, chests or some of these decorative boxes and if you look in here they will have usually carry quite a bit of Valorite, Agapite, and V-Rite. So you can loot all of this. It's not a negative karma thing. They don't fight back. So you can see this one chest I was able to get, you know, 300 Valorite, 150 V-Rite, and 150 agapite, frostwood, and bloodwood. Not to mention, you know, a bunch of barbed leather and these cargoes from the high sea stuff. So it's definitely worth doing. Um, it takes a little bit. You know, I'm not going to really go into detail about about this. I am making another video on my high speed, uh, my high seas pirate build. Um, but I'll save that for another time. But just keep in mind that. Um, you know, you do want to get yourself an orc ship if you're going to farm here. They do the most damage, the cannons do. And um, you don't even really have to fight these guys. You can just loot them. And um, get all of the Valorite, V-Rite, Agapite, and rare ingots and boards that you want. So, that's how I get it. Alright, so now that we have a bunch of uh, colored ingots... Um, of different types. So I've got some Valorite, some V-Rite, some Copper, some Bronze, some Shadow, and some Gold. So generally an Agapite. So generally, you know, you're going to want to use all these. Dull Copper and Iron, you're not going to use a lot of these for filling these kinds of bods because they're not worth enough points. So, you know, once you get enough, um, you can kind of figure out how much you need based on what bods you have. So I'll show you real quick how to fill one of these in case you haven't done it. What you're going to do is say, look, we're going to fill 20 copper heater shields. So um, you just want to make sure that you go in, select copper, and heater shield is 18 ingots. So it's actually more than I thought. Um, make sure your, your um, success chance is 100%. Um, and it does need to be exceptional, so make sure your exceptional chance is 100%. You don't want to really waste any. Um, if you are doing this with like plate mail or something, uh, bods, you want to use the ancient smith hammer. Um, you know, that's probably the good reason to use those charges is filling these kinds of bods. Um, I'm going to use the smithing press because it's convenient and I don't have to worry about charges on my hammer. So you're going to go ahead and say make number. And, oh, just, just a, a helpful hint on this. When you're doing bods, put the ingots in a bag. So I put it in the salvage bag, but you go ahead and just put it on any bag. And then when you make them, you say make 20. I'll just save you that. You don't need to sit through all that crafting. But okay, so now that I've created 20 heater shields, you know, it took up uh, a bunch of ingots. So that was, you know, uh, 360 ingots to make this one. Uh, so you got to factor in the cost of these shadow hammers with how much the ingots cost you to, to get, whether you're mining them or getting them from merchants or buying them from another vendor. So, they, you know, this does factor into the cost. Um, so now what you do is you actually, um, the easiest way is you combine this deed with contained items. So this second to the last option, and then select the bag, and it'll do them all at once. So now you can see that that's 20. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my smith. 
And I'm going to actually make sure that I can get a new BOD. Every time you turn in a BOD, you, uh, you can get another one. So I'm going to make sure that I can get as many BODs as I can from him right now. You're allowed three every 12 hours. Oh, that's not a bad one. It's a large BOD. And then, um, so I can't get any more. And then I'm going to take this and you just drag it on him. And it says save points. You want to say no. Because it's saying, hey, do you want to bank these? And no, what you don't want to do is you, you, you want to say no. You don't want to bank them because you want to collect it immediately. And then you go down and you find the shadow hammer. And you turn it in and say yes. And they start with 45 charges. So that's actually pretty good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off. I'm going to get a whole bunch of these. Uh, one thing I will show you before is you can combine these. So um, if I go back to the, you need to be near Soul Forge in order to do this, but you can double click one and then click another hammer and it'll combine them into one. And you can have a max of 100 charges on one hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of these and get myself a whole bunch of charges of Shadow Runic. Alright, so I filled in a bunch of bods and um, I got several charges and now I've got about 270 left here and I, I made a few already. But I'm going to show you this process. So now once you get your Shadow Runic hammers, um, what you're going to do is we're going to have to craft, craft the metal item out of iron that we want to reforge. Um, you can't reforge um, any sort of color or enhanced item. It has to be a um, crafted item made out of iron or normal wood or normal materials. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a few items. I'm going to make the double axe. We'll go ahead and make several. Um, probably start off with like 10... 10, 15, something like that, and put them in your main pack because you need them in your main pack in order to be able to do the reforge. Um, so now that I have those items, what you want to do is make sure you stand near Soul Forge. And now, oh, sorry, to point out, I did not craft these items with the the hammers. What I did is I crafted them using a standard smith hammer or my smithing press out of iron. So they didn't, they didn't take any charges by just crafting these. And now what we're going to do is if you're near a soul forge and you double click a runic and then select a normally crafted item, you get this runic reforging crafting menu. So this is the important part. Um, you're going to want to make sure you have these settings. Um, Grand Artifice and then Inspired Artifice and then under the choose name, you're going to want to make sure that you choose exquisite of quality. Now, this is the one that's going to get you elemental damage. Now, it also does have this particular name does have other properties. And you'll see through the process that you'll get a lot of them with properties you don't want. Uh, so you just kind of could do it one at a time and just check. Um, sometimes you can get items that have partial properties that you want so like see these ones I made earlier they had they didn't they had elemental damage but they're not complete so they're 80 20 with mage weapon or 80 20 with self repair now self repair is okay um, because it when you imbue this it will go away so this is actually a pretty decent training weapon um, but some of these other ones, like 70 fire, I could enhance these to make them 100%. So I'll try that later in our experiment. And I did make one 100% energy damage. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to go through this process and we'll make some more. We'll see if we can get fire and maybe a cold. Um, now, I found that like one out of 20, one out of 30 chances to really get one. Um, so remember to use these settings. Grand Artifice, Inspired Artifice with Inquisitive Quality, and then make sure that Powerful Reforging is selected. Uh, it should take a total of four charges per try. So that's why you need a lot of Shadow Hammers. So go ahead and then hit Reforge. 
and then look and it added durability so I'm gonna go ahead and immediately put it into my bag here and I'm gonna try again look mage weapon nope and you can see ooh, so we got fire damage of 90% and hit lower attack 20 eh. Well, I don't really want that, but we'll use it for experimenting later. Mage weapon. And there we go. 100% energy damage with no other properties. So that's two energy wax axes I have now. So notice that it has just damage increase and 100% energy. Now it's random. So, you know, if you're going for fire, you're going to have to basically go through and keep doing it until you get fire. Normally you'll see the color change automatically with a few exceptions. Um, sometimes the chaos weapon actually doesn't sh change to be a deep purple like it should. Um, see, like that's a good example. That's a 100% chaos weapon. So you make sure you, you do take a look. 100% chaos weapon with 40%, so that's perfect. It's a good weapon. Blood Elemental Slayer. Hmm. Interesting. Don't really need it. Durability. Alright, so you can see... Um, out of that batch, I got two two axes out of that, and I used, I don't know, whatever, 40 charges. Um, so, you know, you got to keep going until you get the elemental you want. Now, one thing I want to point out is that um, I put them in my salvage bag, but I don't want to actually salvage these. I want to actually unravel them, because why not? Um, I'd rather take the residue than the ingots. So there we go. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, here's one more I didn't do yet. Nope. All right. So I'm going to repeat that process until I run out of charges and get the elemental type that I want. Okay. So I went through all my charges, and I only got one additional 100%, and that was a cold. So that's pretty good. That's what I was looking for. I didn't get any 100% fire. So out of, uh, I guess it was about 400 charges that I ended up with, I had two elementals, uh, or energy, and one chaos, and one cold. So, you know, about one axe per 100 charges, which is, you know, I guess it's about right. Um, uh, it's not a great, and it is random. So, like you see, if I was looking for fire... Um, I didn't get it this time, which kind of sucks, and that's one of the reasons why I keep, um, I do keep, you know, if I'm not going to use it, I, I do keep them. So some, if I'm looking for cold and I, I don't need these energy right now, I'll keep them in. So, um, you know, it's good to have them handy in case you do want to make um, a particular energy. So if I wanted fire, I could use, I have one that I've already made. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. That's the process. You get the idea. Now I did say that I was going to show you um, the way using either dull copper hammers or um, one of the things, even with the shadow, I got a lot of these that were partial. So you can see this one is, you know, 70% fire, 30 physical. And this one is 70 energy, and so poison, partial, and there was a couple of them that were partial chaos. So the ones with poison and chaos, um, I'm not going to really do anything. There's nothing I can really do. I can't make poison to be 100% or chaos be 100%. There's no, there's no um, material type that will do that. 
But some of these, like, uh, so chaos, no, I'm going to just go ahead and dump that. Some of these, like, um, this 70% fire. So all of these fire ones, there's a chance that I could enhance these using, I believe it's bronze. So let me, let me take a look. I'm going to look it up here. I'm going to search for UO ingots in Google and look up at the UO guide site. And it says that bronze adds 40% fire damage uh, when, when enhanced. And agapite will add 30% cold. V-Rite will add 20% uh, energy. And so does copper. So if you see what I mean, um, so this one's 70% energy, and the most I could enhance would be an additional 20%. So you need at least 80 energy in order for me to get 100% weapon. So I'm going to go ahead and dump that. This one's the same deal, 70%. I'm going to dump that. Now this one's 90% energy. I can actually do that, potentially, and then 70% energy. So out of all of these, there's four of these items that I could potentially enhance to make 100%. Um, now this one has lower requirements. I don't really want that, but I'll show you the process anyway. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that enhancing is... Um, is is it rarely works it's very rare that it actually works so i'm going to go ahead and add some bronze and what was energy what did we want to try energy we say copper where was my copper there we go now with enhancing it's kind of one of those things where um, there's a lot of superstition around it it is super random. I'm going to just make sure that I'm, I'm holding my Ash 60 so that I have the highest level blacksmithing I can. I'm going to make sure my blacksmithing um, bonus is, is there. And I'm actually going to use a charge. It doesn't use a charge, but I'm going to click my Ash. And I'm going to select, let's try the elemental one first. So we selected copper, and now I'm going to say enhance. Now you can see it says the chance book fail catastrophically the item is lost and it disappeared so that is super common with enhancing it does it all the time the only way to avoid that is to use what they call a forged metal of artifacts um, and i'm not going to waste these that's kind of a pay item that you can get from the uo store so i'm not going to waste that on this um, not on a crafted initial enhance. So I, I would use this later if I knew that I wanted the enhance to uh, succeed after I'd already imbued it. But we're not going to do that for these. Um, so let's go ahead and change to bronze and see if we can get 100% fire. So now we're going to enhance. And look at that. So as you can see, we were able to actually roll... Um, It didn't reflect at first, but see now by enhancing that item, it succeeded. And since bronze adds 40% fire, and it already had 70% fire when it went over 100, and therefore took the 100 as it. So I enhanced that one to get my fire damage. Now you can do this using. So the reason why that's important is that say you have a whole bunch of dull copper hammers, like I do. I have a whole bunch of charges. With dull copper, you can go through and do the exact same thing we did with shadow, but you'll never get 100% of the regular roll. But there's a good ch chance you will get those partial ones like these, you know, where they're at least 70 fire resist. So, um, you know, that might be a good option if you don't have any shadow and you have a bunch of dull copper laying around. Uh, let's go ahead and see if these other ones work. Look at that, that one worked too. So you kind of have to move it and then we'll take it. And now we have a fire damage and of course it has hit life leech, which I don't really want on these weapons, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it anyway. And we'll try this last one. <laughs> and of course that one worked as well. So 
That one has hit lower attack. Again, it's not something I want, but at least it's 100 fire damage. So there you go. That's how we craft 100% elemental damage weapons um, using Runic Reforging. You can see I was able to get energy chaos. Uh, in case you're wondering, um, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but chaos is a great uh, elemental type when you're fighting uh, a non on the roof encounter. So you definitely want to get one of these if you plan on uh, being a sampire on the roof. Um, cold is great also for the roof uh, for demons and um, dragons. So it's a great cold damage weapons are great to have. Fire is great for um, undead and a few other things. So energy, I'm not really sure. I think energy is great against... Um, Maybe lesser reptiles. I don't know. I have to look it up. Anyway, that is how you reforge. Hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.